Listener supported. WNYC Studios. Brian Lehrer on WNYC and attention shoppers, attention people who sell things to shoppers. Now we'll open up the phones for business owners and consumers alike. How is the global supply chain and the continued disruption caused by the COVID pandemic impacting your shopping as a customer or your business as a seller? Tweet at Brian Lehrer or give us a call now at 646-435-7280, 646-435-7280. This is about the shortages of so many things being reported and discovered now. What's in short supply that you've been trying to buy or that is slowing down your ability to do business? Help us report the story of the supply chain shortages at 646-435-7280, 646-435-7280. Want some examples? The Atlantic has a story that dropped just in the last few days that says in Vietnam and Malaysia, where workers churn out products as varied as a third of all shoes imported to the U.S. and chip components that are crucial to auto manufacturing, controlling the far more transmissible Delta variant, the article says, has meant sharply decreasing manufacturing capacity and reducing manpower at busy container ports. That's a quote from the Atlantic article. So business owners or those who deal with the international supply chain in any way for work, are you hearing from your factories directly about what's going on? What about the price of shipping containers or imported materials? And what is it about this summer, now fall, of 2021 compared even to last year when the pandemic was newer and things were more locked down? that's driving up consumer prices or shipping delays or just creating shortages for your company? And how will you compensate? Are you raising prices to compensate, contributing to inflation or some other way? Or just can't you get stuff at all? 646-435-7280. 646-435-7280. Here's another example that maybe you know about if you have tried to um, get happy in New Jersey, maybe you're noticing a shortage of booze. NorthJersey.com reports that last year, liquor store owners said they had trouble getting canned beers, blame it on a shortage of aluminum. Today, it's bottled beers, blame it on the pandemic and on international tariffs. And top shelf tequilas, forget about it. That's a quote from NorthJersey.com. They wrote, forget about it. And if you were thinking about driving to another state to stock up, you can forget about going to Pennsylvania. Last week, the Pennsylvania State Board in charge of consumer liquor sales announced that it was limiting sales of certain alcoholic beverages to two bottles per customer per day. And that was not to prevent alcoholism or drunk driving. That was because of shortages of bottles two bottles per customer per day in Pennsylvania. So those working in the liquor industry or bar or restaurant industry in New Jersey want to help us report this story. What are you out of and why, no matter what industry you work in or shoppers, what can't you get? How's that couch delivery working out? 646-435-7280, and we'll take your calls right after this. Brian Lehrer on WNYC, as we're inviting you now to help us report the story of the supply chain shortages. What can't you buy? What can't you sell? Because you can't get the stuff. 646-435-7280. 646-435-7280. Our lines are full right now, so you can get in as uh, people finish up. And let's start with Josh in Oceanside who sells coffee, I think. Hi, Josh. You're on WNYC. That's right. They call me Java Josh. Hello, Brian. Huge fan. Glad you're on. Tell us your story. Well, we, we're, we're getting started. We're in farmer's markets all over Long Island, and we have a great following, and I can't get the plastic cup to put the iced coffee in. 
It, uh, Restaurant Depot hasn't had them since June, and I've been calling suppliers all over the country. I'm, I think I have enough right now, but it's really dicey. And, you know, I'm paying three times the amount, and it's all because of COVID and the shipping problems coming out of California. Have you been able to trace it a level deeper than that? Like, what is it about COVID that's causing a shortage of plastic cups, of all things? Well, what I heard was that they shut down the port out in uh, Long Beach, California, um, and that when there was, when they reopened, there was such a backlog of ships waiting to get unloaded and a shortage of labor that there are ships waiting out in sea to get unloaded to this very day. And then they got to get truck drivers to do, take the containers to the various destinations. And that creates another bottleneck. So I don't really have firsthand experience with that. And, but this is what all the suppliers have been saying and they've been saying it for months and yeah. Another yeah. item that I can't get a hold of uh-huh. is bulk sour gummy worms. Bulk sour gummy worms. You can buy them in the grocery store and prepackaged, but we sell them. We package them ourselves and sell them, and they're just been out of stock for the last four months. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you said favorite. you package them and sell them because I was worried for a minute that you sell gummy worm flavored coffee, but that's uh, that's not what you do. Do you, do you, do you <laughs> want to? No, since you're showing up at uh, farmers markets in our area, do you want to uh, say the name of your company? You can do that. Thank you. We're New York Gourmet Coffee, and is, we're online, but you have to spell out the whole name: New York Gourmet Coffee dot com. Josh, thank you. Good luck out there. Caitlin in Montclair, you're on WNYC. Hi, Caitlin. Hi. Um, I know a lot of people in this recent flood uh, lost their cars, and I think people have been having a really hard time getting both new and used cars because of the chip shortage. So uh, I feel really bad for people out there. Um, And I also just wanted to say um, I think people need to be really patient with uh, with stores because I think they're really doing their best. Um, and just a reminder to everyone, probably start your Christmas shopping early uh, because I think you're going to have a hard time if you're waiting for three-day delivery. I know. I've seen an article or two like that. I can't believe it. It's September, and they're saying start your Christmas shopping now. Whoa. Do you have a car story yourself about trying to get a car? No. No. Fortunately, uh, we were okay with our car Um but I know our, our cleaner lost her car, um, and she's having a terrible time working with insurance as well. So um, I think she's borrowing for now. But um, she, she went in just to get some prices, and even, even used cars were just far more expensive than she expected. Caitlin, thank you very much. Sheesh, it's September 23rd, and we're talking about Christmas shopping. Anu in Brooklyn, you're on WNYC. Hi, Anu. Hi. So nice to be on, Brian. Um, I have a business that caters to products of body, mind, and spirit, and they're a natural products. And so I like to use glass as much as possible. And I have a frosted glass bottle that I use for my body um, oils, and they've been on back order since April. And when the pandemic first started, I couldn't even get plastic bottles um, because a lot of... uh, I was told by one of my vendors that a lot of companies that sold alcoholic beverages switched over to selling, you know, sanitizers, and they would buy just the whole lot. So there was nothing for the small business owner like myself. Mm. How are you? And com- um, how are you compensating? Mm-hmm. Um, I had to switch over to plastic. Um, you know, for this product, this is a luxury product. It should be in glass, and you know. I send out a newsletter every week, so I explain I explain the situation to my customers, and they're you know they're very accommodating. Um, but I would prefer to put less plastic into yeah. the environment. Into the environment. Um, and in plus, terms you, of, plus, you don't want to sell quality in plastic; it just doesn't feel right, right? Exactly, exactly. And in terms of being a consumer, I started a Facebook page called Shop Your Closet because. I'm moving, and so I'm trying to get rid of things, and I realize the amount of clothes I have is ridiculous. 
And I knew other people were in the same situation. When women are stressed, one of the things they do is shop. And so I've encouraged a, a number of women to stop buying clothes for a year um, and just, you know, shop their closet, buy, wear things they haven't worn in a while. Mm -hmm. And many of them had clothing that, you know, still had tags on it that they hadn't worn, you know, that they bought months and years ago. Uh, and then I encourage them to give away what they're not wearing, what they're right. no longer Which, can fit or it's not their style right. anymore, to right. like and shelters and other so nonprofit yes. organizations. Yes, and that's, of course, a great thing, a great, great thing to do. I know a guy, Anu, who um, started working from home, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, and he looked at his own closet and he's like, I have so many shirts. I, I, I can't believe how many shirts I have. And he wasn't wearing any of them anymore. He's doing, you know, sweatpants and tees or whatever he was doing. Um, but uh, so that's an interesting thing to raise. Thank you very much. Good luck out there. And Lori in Long Island City, you're on WNYC. Hi, Lori. Hi, Brian. Thanks for this and all your wonderful shows. Um, yes, I'm an interior designer. And um, while this, we've got a perfect storm going that would be and is admittedly a boon to my industry um, with lots of people that have been cooped up at home realizing that things need to be updated or replaced and they've got money that they're not spending on travel or entertainment now. So the industry is very busy, but the supply chain issues are absolutely ridiculous with the lack of trucks, truckers, containers, ships, um, even things that I waited two months for one piece of furniture that was on the dock in Vietnam, to sh just waiting for a ship to come and pick it up. Then once it got to North Carolina, where, as everyone knows, most of the furniture industry is based, it had to wait another two months just to be painted, and then another six weeks to get it from North Carolina to New York. I mean, recently I had something that I was told was in stock, and when I know now to say in which country is it in stock, and I was told, no worries, it's it's a reached the port of Charleston, South Carolina. All it has to do is be unloaded and shipped to North Carolina. And that process took a month. Then it took one month to get it from Charleston, South Carolina to Hickory, North Carolina, which ordinarily would be a three-hour drive. And what my, some of my vendors are telling me now that they're shipping, and I'm, I'm talking about one end table. I'm not talking about custom Whoa. upholstery. That's a whole yeah. other thing. But they're telling me that they're starting to ship things from South Carolina to North Carolina by rail because they can't even find a truck to put an end table on. Is that and a shortage so of that piece of it? I'm curious if that has to do with drivers because I also read that meat manufacturers yes. like Tyson Foods are having trouble hiring right now. This is according to the website fooddive.com, the website um, Freight Waves, which covers news in the trucking industry, reports that the national vaccine mandate might be making a lot of truck drivers quit and the ripple effect from there. Yes, yes. I think there's lots of different factors, but the lack of truck drivers is definitely one of them. But I also think that, you know, one of your previous callers mentioned the, the thing with trying to get new cars and the computer chip. I also think there there's a, sh a shortage of trucks. So it, there's, there is, there's this perfect storm of high, high demand and, um, and, and very little, not only supply, but then when you can find something, then trying to just get it simply across the state line. Is it affecting price or just waiting time? Yes. No, no. It's definitely affecting price. I've had one lighting company that has had four price increases since January. And when I questioned them, them on it, so much of their product comes from China. And they said that uh, a container they used to char um, be charged $5,000 for a container to be shipped. Now they're being charged $20,000 for a container to be shipped. Mm -hmm. So everybody is having wow. more because once a year, once a year price increases were, were pretty much standard. Now it's three, maybe four times a year, or they're adding 
surcharges to everything. Uh, you know, custom upholstery, one of my vendors just, you know, they'll just add a big fat surcharge that will just say COVID-19 surcharge that will be a high percentage. So it's definitely affecting pricing too. Depressing, but very clear. Lori, thank you for checking in. We really appreciate it. All right. To a whole other industry, it looks like. From Elliot in Princeton. Elliot, you're on WNYC. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. You work in the cosmetics industry? Yeah, yeah. I'm in purchasing for uh, a large cosmetics company. And we can, we're having, well, first of all, there's price increases all over the place. Uh, but also, the, the lead times are tremendous. Uh, and, and a lot of it is the, the ports in California, if you're bringing something in from, from Asia. They're all backed up, and then the trains going through Chicago get backed up. But we can't get uh, glass components for little bottles. We can't get plastic for little bottles. We can't get pumps. Uh, every, I don't understand why we're not seeing the big price increases at the retail level that we're seeing it, at our end. Hmm. And the, um, the, your story, like a few of the others, others that we've heard uh, before, seem to trace back to difficulty in getting things shipped from China. Uh, some from China, India, Thailand. There's also, we buy uh, a lot of the things are, are fats and oils from palm oil and coconut oil. And I've heard that a lot of times they bring labor in from other countries to harvest those crops. And because of COVID, they can't bring in the labor uh, across the board, international borders. Uh, so that, that's one of the problems. And then, um, it, I mean, it, it's the trucks, uh, as some people kept talking about the truck, trucks and truck drivers. I don't know if older drivers retired. Uh, during the pandemic, when there was no demand, uh, they just can't pick up the things fast enough. Yeah, and we, we uh, and, uh, and transport them. Thank you, Elliot. Yeah, and we heard in our earlier segment about the New York economy um, about retirements in general among people, especially who um, might fear exposure to COVID in their particular lines of work, and so retirements are are definitely a thing, and I guess across industries. Caroline in Crown Heights, you're on WNYC. Caroline or Caroline? It's Caroline. I'm so happy to be on the show. Um, So I work in the cheese and dairy industry, and we've had this kind of ongoing issue that hit us almost immediately. Um, So when you make cheese, something that a lot of people don't think about is it has to age for, you know, sometimes six months to a year. And so when you're buying your milk and you're putting it into cheese and you're then aging it, um, you have to kind of predict what the market is going to be like in six months to a year from now, which has been impossible and honestly kind of depressing to try and do um, because everything is just so, you don't want to think about the future. It's scary right now. So what that has led to is a lot of dairy farmers and the types of farmers that I work with are real like stewards of the land. They're small dairy farmers. These aren't like the big, you mm-hmm. know, factory farms. These are, these are small, like New York State, Vermont, Wisconsin farmers. Um, they're drying off their herds. They're selling their herds. They're not able to bring in the revenue that they, you know, usually would. And, and then if you go on the conservative side and you don't buy as much milk, you don't produce as much cheese, but then there's all of a sudden a big demand for it you lose out on sales. And if you overbuy and then there's a surplus, you know, you're kind of burning money anyway. And it's just been um, a real ongoing struggle that I think even if there is an end to the pandemic, which I really hope it is, I think it's going to take several years for the dairy and the cheese industry to kind of come back from that. Yeah, that's so sad. And explain it. I don't quite get it. So explain briefly again why if these dairy farmers are relatively local, let's say Northeast regional, and selling their products in the region, what's what's the bottleneck? So the bottleneck is that we have to secure our milk, um, you know, months prior to when the cheese gets made and then we start aging it. Um, and the, the bottleneck is happening where they are drying off their herds And and when you dry off your herd, I mean, it it affects, like, the whole year. And so there just, like, isn't enough milk to go around for 
everyone. And with less herd and they're selling less milk, then it's less revenue for the farmers. Caroline, thank you. Thank you so much for checking in, and good luck out there. Um, we're going to end with a rainbow at the end, says Elena in Westchester. Elena, you're on WNYC. We've got about 45 seconds for you. Hi. Hi, Brian. Thank you for taking my call. Love your show. Repeat caller. So both my daughter and I are in the market for uh, replacing our cars, We live in the same household and we commute in the same direction. We've tried to shop. However, we all know what the market is like. So in the end, we decided to commute together, um, try to sell my car, and um, yeah, hopefully see a cleaner and brighter rainbow (laughs) because we're only using one car. One less car in the family and family togetherness on your commute. There you go. Thank you. Elena, good way to end. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you who called. And wow, and I'm looking at the board, and we could have gone on from industry to industry to industry describing shortages in various supply chains. So maybe we'll come back to this. The Brian Lehrer Show is produced by Lisa Allison, Mary Croak, Zoe Azale, Amina Serna, and Carl Boisron. Zach Goddard Cohen works on our daily podcast. Megan Ryan is the head of live radio. Juliana Fonda and Leora Noam Kravitz at the Audio Controls. I'm Brian Lehrer.